Welcome back. In the previous video, we looked at the full application life cycle from development to retirement. In this video, we will look more closely at the very beginning of the story, application development. There are two types of application development projects, new application development and customizations. New application development is when a brand new piece of software is created and customizations is when we use an existing software but modify it to meet a customer's needs. Examples of this include a new telecom billing system or a banking system, which are generally too complex and too risky to develop from as brand new software. And customers prefer to simply buy an existing piece of software and customize it to meet their requirements. Customization is more popular because it's less costly and risky than new application development. So we will spend more time discussing customization than new development. However, Let's start by looking at new development projects as it is a more intuitive starting point to help us understand how software is developed. Let's look at who is involved in developing new software. At minimum, we need a customer and a software developer. A customer is generally a person or a group or a company who has a problem and believes that software can somehow help uh, some or all of that problem and is willing to invest money to develop new software. A customer wants software because it helps them do something faster, cheaper or better. Then there is the software developer or programmer who has the programming skills and time to build software that needed by the customer. Typically, there is a team of programmers and of course many other roles like a project manager, business analyst, testers. But for now, let's keep it simple and talk about only these two types of people. New software is developed when there is no existing software that meets some or all of the customer's requirements. Or the customer wishes to invest in innovation to create something new. Let's look at how software gets built. In the most simple case, software gets built like this. A customer explains his or her requirements to the development team, who then design and develop the software. The software once completed, is made available to the customer who then tests it and finally deploys the application so that others can begin to use the software. But here's where things start to get interesting. Let's look at what happens if the customer didn't explain the requirements well or the developer didn't fully understand the requirements. Quite understandably, if the requirements were not accurate, what gets designed and developed and tested also not be correct. Here's a chart which shows the cost of fixing requirements errors in a project. As you can see, it's relatively easy to fix requirements errors early in the project and a lot more expensive to fix it later in the project. But how big an issue is this? How many projects globally are affected by not getting the correct requirements? Studies have shown that about 70% of all software projects fail to get delivered on time, within budget, or to the quality that the customer expected. Let's pause here for a bit and think about what this means. If you are currently involved in a software project, it means that there is a 70% chance that your project will be late or over budget or not be delivered to the quality that's expected. If we think in terms of the amount of money spent each year on all software development across the world, that adds up to several millions, sometimes billions, spent on failure. We rarely see such low success rates in any other engineering discipline. So what's going on here? Why is software development not like other engineering disciplines? Compared to other, software, compared to other engineering disciplines like mechanical or civil engineering, which have been around for hundreds of years, computer and software engineering is relatively new, only at 50 years. Nevertheless, we would assume that somehow we would have figured out how to improve our success rates in the past 50 years. If you look at the failure rate from 1994 to 2003, we appear to be improving, but it doesn't seem like we have gotten past a 30% success rate and 70% of projects still appear to be in trouble seems a bit depressing, but is this really true? 
are 70% of projects in fact late or over budget or is this just a perception? We will discuss the answer to this question in more detail in a separate video. But for now, let's focus on the first and the most important step in building software on time and on budget and to a high quality. Getting the customer's requirements right. Please join me in the next video as we look at different ways to understand the customer's requirements and look at ways to increase the success rate of software development projects.